I remember when I was younger, I went to um, a dance school and, you know, all the girls were white with their pink tights and their long flowy hair. And I remember feeling like an alien, like a six year old just looking around and realizing that my hair doesn't grow down, it grows out and up. And I'll never forget at um, a recital, um, my teacher looked at my hair and she was just like, I don't know what to do with that. And I think from that point, I had this fascination with having skirt hair, uh, which is like putting a skirt over your head and pretending like, you know, you've got long flowy hair. For me, when I was little, it was always a long sleeve shirt. And if you like take it halfway off your head, then you had long hair. That's what I liked to do. Um, but definitely, I think being in spaces that are often held by a majority of white people from a young age, you feel that sense of being different. And I think the world is designed to accommodate white people so much more than it is to accommodate many minority. It's sad because I look back at that experience and I realized that, you know, I was very much embodying what society has been trying to tell a number of people that aren't white is that that we're wrong. It's seeing hair that doesn't look like yours in commercials and thinking, well, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's what I'm supposed to be and I'll try to get as close as I can. Um, I think there's this immense pressure to kind of, especially when you're younger, trying to fit in. And as you get older, you understand that there's no point trying to fit into a system which is not designed for you. Um, I think there's a lack of white people usually learning to understand an experience or a circumstance that is different than theirs that often instead forces people who may be different to pull themselves as close as they can to that set ideal which is unattainable for most of the world to the sense where like you know you as a black person you walk into spaces and you're representing a whole community of people so you're always conscious of everything that you say everything that you that you do but it's always a struggle i feel as a black person to be in a white space because ultimately you can never be yourself especially culturally growing up mixed there's often this kind of push and pull from both sides of not being white and then not being black enough. And the spaces I go into being mixed, I may appear physically different than someone who has two black parents, but I'm still not ever gonna walk into a space of white people and look like I belong or look similar to anyone. I think growing up in families, depending on how much you're around the black side of your family, I think you, you have a different upbringing, you have a different sense of self, you have a different sense of otherness because you're surrounded by people who are your family who don't look like you. Um, I think also there's a sense of being responsible for your own education as a black person culturally growing up. For me, not around that side of my family, there's a different expectation once you arrive to adulthood of a history of a sense of belonging culturally that might be different for people who experienced blackness as something they are a part of, but not fully given access to. I am not fully appreciated for who I am. I mean, um, and if I am, it's very much in a fetishized type of way. There's this negative connotation um, constantly of me being less than and not feminine. You know, there's this idea that a darker skinned woman is more aggressive and much more stronger and be able to uphold the black community. But at the end of the day, we're human beings. I'm like any other woman. I cry, I bleed the same way, like any other woman, like any other person. And I just feel like a lot of the times um, that's not being acknowledged. So essentially, I'm forever in this state of being overlooked. My relationship to blackness has always been something, I think something that I've always just felt like at one point I would get permission for. I think being mixed, there's all these questions of do I call myself mixed is that rejecting being black if I say I'm half black is that being too offensive to something if I say I'm black is that you know disregarding certain privileges that I just afford as a person who looks more like what Hollywood has kind of set a precedent for as what a black woman should look like and I benefit from that today in a way that I wouldn't have benefited at a certain time in history but being in the context that I exist in it's always been a struggle of how to 
acknowledge without disregarding certain privileges that I do have. For me, I kind of like stand in my power, in my culture, my heritage and my knowledge in this society because of colorism, because of colonialism, because of imperialism, there's this shame of being black even within the black community and I am constantly trying to um, go against that all the time. I'm going against this feeling of being ashamed for being black because it's who I am, it's magical and I wouldn't change it for the world. And so, you know, I take pride in being someone that, you know, I dance to my own beat of my drum and I'm proud of being a black woman. As a black woman, with two black parents, I know that my treatment is very much different in some sense to a mixed race woman. And so when I say someone's mixed, I feel like a, in the past, especially um, in different places I've been to, like in the States, for example, there's this thing where by me saying that, I'm disregarding, you know, mixed race person's black experience. And I'm not at all. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not disregarding anything. I'm By me saying that this person is mixed, it's not saying that they're, they're not experiencing very similar situation. They're not experiencing racism like they, like I am and all this kind of stuff. But let's not, you know, deny the fact that they've got a parent that is black and they have a parent that is of another ethnicity. fact that there is many different types of gradients to um to to like how a black person walks into this world and colorism is a big thing and I just kind of feel like what is wrong with being mixed there's nothing wrong with being mixed being identifying as being mixed no one is taking your black card away from you we understand that you're black we understand that you're person of color there is nothing wrong with just saying you're mixed that's my mindset because you know I'm a black woman But I do think saying you're mixed, sometimes then it's the response that you're trying to belittle your blackness or that you're not accepting it or you're not embracing it or you're not acknowledging it. And I think that's always just the line things teeter on being mixed is because if I walk into a room, most people will say, oh, the tall black girl with glasses, mm -hmm. how they would like tell someone who yeah. I am, right? Based yeah. on just physical appearance. But also because of that, I'm, I think, I understand what you're saying because it's acknowledging that you are mixed, but I think sometimes it comes across as trying to place yourself in this, like, holier than thou thing, like trying yeah. to, like, oh, well, I'm close to this, and it kind of comes across as this, like, Obnoxious. distancing yeah, yourself, yeah. or, or yeah. thinking that you're better than, or thinking yeah. that you have something else, which yeah. is not in any way a mindset I've ever had. I think things in the past that were difficult for mixed people was they were rejected by mm. two races, if we talk mm. about in America. Mm. But now we've gotten to a point in society where white people have decided that they're gonna try and be more diverse because it's gonna make them more money. But the way they do that is by half-assing it and hiring a lot of people who are ethnically ambiguous or who don't just look black to play parts that are black. And I think that's this weird parallel that we've had in society, but it all stems from way this world was built upon racism when you boil it down and talk about these experiences they're so different but they have so many more similarities than they do differences and I think us talking about it and acknowledging it moving forward as a society is what helps highlight those similarities between all ethnicities I, I think it's very important okay we're the same but different 
Yeah, I think it's very important to identify our differences because if we don't identify our differences, then we can't move forward as a society to get to a point where we're on uh, on the same page. I feel it's very important for, especially as a dark-skinned black woman, talking to, you know, a mixed-race woman like yourself. Um, it, there's something like growing up, there's like a... Um, there's a like a deep rooted thing where I've constantly been constantly shoved to the side whenever I kind of speak about my experiences because it's this thing where it's like we're all black we're all black we're all black so it kind of discredits how I feel as a dark-skinned woman that my opinion um my experiences are not important or they're not valued because at the end of the day we're all going through the same thing we're all black and the thing is is that let's just be real we're going through very similar things when it comes to um, society and racism. We're going through very similar things and a lot of the times the same thing, but there is a difference. There's a difference in the way that I'm treated as a dark skinned woman and there's a difference in the way that you're treated as a light skinned woman. Differences between being dark skinned and being light skinned is what we're talking about. There's Without trying to make a pun, it's not necessarily a black or white issue. There's a lot of space in between. There's a lot of shades. There's a lot of color. There's a lot of difference. There's a lot of relation in these experiences. I think it's important to acknowledge differences. I think it's important to acknowledge privileges. And I think it's important to remember that those aren't divisive things, just realities that we face as people. Exactly, realities that we face as people. And at the end of the day, like you said, we have a lot of shared experiences. There are some things that are different and you know, it is what it is. We're the same, but we're different.